For the first time in its six year history, the Ovo Energy Women's Tour headed to Kent for stage two, held at the county's all purpose cyclopark. The 65 kilometre stage was set to be high paced from the gun, and a warm up was essential for those hoping to compete over 25 laps of the 2.5 kilometre circuit. Uh, yesterday was uh, cold and rainy day, but uh, the race uh, is okay. We arrive uh, with uh, some energy for uh, today and the next days. Yeah, it's sort of similar to the track, I guess. I tried to tell myself. I think it would be a good day, a bit interesting. We don't do something like this very often, so um, yeah, should be good. In a vast contrast from stage one, there was sunshine for the peloton as it rolled out for what was set to be a frantic affair. With one neutralised lap, the bunch were able to get a feel for the technical circuit. But the race director soon dropped the flag and the racing was on. After 10 of the 25 laps, the race launched into the first of three intermediate sprints, with 2014 overall winner Mariana Voss beating Dignan to the maximum bonus time. Even during a brief lull in the action there was drama, when Voss punctured and needed a quick bike change to get her back in the action. With the help of teammate Paulina Royakas, she was soon safely back in the bunch, but far too late to compete in the second sprint. Movistar's Shayla Gutierrez went incredibly long and bagged three seconds ahead of Sunweb's defending champion Corin Rivera. It was not long before the bunch contested the final sprint, this one with 12.5 kilometres remaining. Dagnan opened her effort early, but despite flying towards the line was unable to hold off German champion Liana Lippert. Trek Segafredo had aggressively controlled the race throughout and led the fast reducing bunch into the closing 500 metres, placing Dignan for the final. They rounded the last bend still at the front, but it was Voss who found herself in clear air as the line approached. The former world champion powered for the win, while behind her it was Dignan who held on to take second, but it was her Dutch rival who celebrated in well-worn traditional style. It was fast and in the last lap, yeah, I wasn't on a perfect position and then suddenly a gap opened up and I could find my way. And then at 200 meters to go, I thought, okay, now I need to go and then I'll just see how far I get. And I took a little gap and quite surprised I could hold it to the line. This morning I had no idea that I'd be sprinting into second place, but actually I think it was a huge advantage that we'd done the intermediate sprints because we knew how to race it, because it was a technical finish really. So, um, yeah, just an incredible lead out from my team. That deserved a win, but I'm not quite fast enough. <laughs> I have some mixed feelings right now because I could have done better maybe in the sprint, but yeah, I mean, I'm in good shape, so we are confident for the next days, and I think tomorrow the, the game will really begin, so we are ready for it. Despite her breakaway efforts, Elena Cecchini finished a strong fourth, followed by Italian compatriots Maria Giulia Confalonieri and Sofia Bertizzolo. Bonus time and her second place on the stage puts 2016 winner Lizzie Dignan into second place overall, while Sarah Roy moves into fifth. <laughs>